Hi everyone, Nathan Nemmer here from Mighty Lancer Games and this evening we're going to be painting some, uh, or I'm going to be painting some orcs uh, from the Dominion box set and Mrs MLG is going to be painting that cool little pot grot that she's got over there uh, from the box set and we're going to, hopefully going to be able to show you how nice they are and how cool and funky these sculpts are to paint and full of character and detail. So, uh, hi to everyone in chat. Hi, Wicked D. Hi, Pete the Priest. Hi, Goblin Squire. Hi, Cookie Monster. Uh, thanks, Pete the Priest, for the hydrate. And thanks, Cookie Monster, for the silly voice. I suppose I better move my microphone a bit closer. So I'm going to be painting this orc this evening and I've just figured out that he's got a helmet on and I thought it was just part of his hood. Do I have to do that in a silly way? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just finish this and then I will. So this evening we're going to do a, uh, a giveaway where uh, you can win a awesome little uh, key ring that Mrs. MLG is showing up there. This is a uh, release item for the Dominion box set and it is an orc shield like on uh, on this chappy here. Uh, I'll Oh, I can never get him in camera. There, like his shield design on there. So that's uh, that's what it is. It's an orc shield, but they look particularly cool. Excellent. So yeah, that's it. Put exclamation mark orc in, and you will receive a ticket into the raffle. Hi, Chunkster. And uh, subscribers get two tickets. And uh, you have to be a follower to enter. Hi, Chunkster. Excuse me. So, where was I? I will do. I'll do that in a little bit. So I've got uh, some of the other Age of Sigma models from the starter set assembled here at the side of me, and uh, we'll show some of those off in a little while. Once we've managed to get a little bit of paint on this chap, so. Uh, so far I've painted some skin and I've given him a black hood and uh, now I'm going to paint his shield with orange because my other orcs, my Iron Jaws Force for Age of Sigma uh, are highlighted with black and orange or you've got black armour and orange sections so I want these guys to match in so uh, they're going to have orange shields and black armour and hoods and whatever and, uh, and then the rest of their clothing is going to be in brown. That needs a bit more of a shake. What's everybody been up today? I hope you've all had a great day. Another nice, beautiful, sunny day in Bridlington. We've had uh, had our tea al fresco this evening, which has been very nice. Shaking that for ages. There we go. There we go. So we're going to use some uh, some burning orange, some classic Reaper HD burning orange for the base coat of his shield. And this will probably take a couple of coats, really, over the grey. So I undercoated them. I had a can of uh, half a half a tin of Mechanicus standard grey kicking about. So I've just used that to undercoat them. Hi Tony. Hi Tony, how you doing? Ah, Pete the Priest says he's been into MLG today. Did you get anything cool and exciting, Pete?
Hi, crazy fish. Some red paint, yeah, I see. It's nearly the end of the month though, Pete. Pete says it's not payday yet. How do they get paid at the end of the month? I don't know, just generalizing. A lot of people get paid at the end of the month, don't they? So, that's uh, a thin coat of uh, burning orange, and then we're going to give it another thin coat once that's dried. And then I'm going to give it a little wash with some uh, red, a thin down wash of, of red ink. And then uh, we'll highlight it back up, is my plan. Highlighting it finally with some fireball orange, which is cool. Yeah, no, uh, they've not landed yet, and obviously we can't uh, we can't ship them out or hand them out until release day yet. Crazy fish, he's asking when the Dominion box is in. Tony says he's doing good. He started working on glazing metallics today. Fancy hat. Yeah, is is that for Baron von Fancy Hat, Tony? So I'm going to use some umber brown, which should be a d nice dark brown for the leather on his waist, this chap. Hi Moxie, how you doing? There we go, nice bit of umber brown. So I'm using some classic, uh, say classic because they don't make them anymore, uh, in this format anyway. Reaper HD paints. These 298 paint codes are the HD range, the Master Series HD, which are a little bit more heavily pigmented, but they've rebranded these into the Bones paint line now, rather than having a, a separate paint range altogether. So they're still available, uh, these colours. In fact, that's a bit thin. That one. Didn't shake it enough, I don't think. Not use them for a little while. Oh yeah, let's let's give it a whirl. Haven't used it for a while, have I? Get our vortex mixer out on the go. Need more plugs. <laughs> no, we haven't got them yet, Crazy Fish. We've got one. Oh, we've got, oh, sorry, I've got this guy. Sorry, I do apologise. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, they uh, they do look particularly nice. I've got two actually. Yeah. You're gonna show the rest off later. I am. I'm gonna show you the rest off later. <laughs> just been on the vortex mixer and I still decided to give it an extra shake <laughs> excellent much better much better what have you got to tell us Mrs MLG nothing it's really hard for me to tell 
Moxie says, uh, <clears throat> happy to dodge the football. Not my thing, leaving it to Mrs. to watch. Is the football on, is there? I have no idea. No, I don't, don't know. Well, we, come, we stream on a Tuesday at 7, Moxie, because then we, uh, we watch Hamish at 8. So that's why this one's 7. And that's why I always get myself very confused. Oh, apparently it's England. Is it? Oh. How, how can they play when they've all got COVID? Yeah. Anyway, don't know. We don't watch. We don't watch football. Maybe when we get past qualifying stage, it might be worth uh, a bit of spectating. Really? Why? Oh, got to be patriotic and support the country. Mm, but it's football. It's not supporting the country, is it? It's just some blokes with a ball. <laughs> I'm painting brown on my orc's skirt. Your orc's wearing a skirt? Yeah, he's got like, yeah, like a, oh, yeah, a skirt thing going on, covering his uh, lower regions. Have to tell us. Yeah, we've uh, unpacked uh, the majority of WizKids Wave 14 today. They're pretty cool. Some uh, We're still waiting on some of them coming from the States, but there is some particularly nice minis in the, the stuff that has arrived. I especially like the grey render. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's me deciding what kind of silly voice to go mm. for. Oh dear, you made me cough then. <laughs> uh, yeah. I especially like the grey render. It's very nice, it looks very cool. <laughs> and the, the young Remoras, that's also rather special. Could go with my adult Remoras figure that I haven't painted yet. What else is there? There's a red slard that's particularly cool. There's a, an Otiog. I think it's an Otiog. That's how you're supposed to say it. Uh, that's a, a funky aberration looking thing. I like that one. The saber-toothed tigers, they're especially cool. But we didn't, unfortunately, we didn't get in many, in many of those. And hyenas, I like those. They're also rather special. And, and some creatures that I've never heard of before, called manes. Which, uh, unfortunately... Like I say, never heard of, but they do look particularly funky. Yeah. A bit like Nerglings. Hydrate. Hydrate. Oh. Thanks, Tony. <coughs> uh, when, and when are you starting on the Conflict 47 stuff, Tony? That's... Uh, I, I am intrigued by uh, Conflict 47. I've already got a late war German army for bolt action and a uh, paratrooper force for the Americans as well. So it wouldn't take much to add a little bit into. Uh, make a, a bolt action a uh, conflict 47 worthy force I quite like the German Falschmjäger uh, I can't remember what they're called but they're um, like heavily armoured Falschmjäger troops they look particularly funky 
rather cool. You right, me darling? Oh, anything I can do to help? <laughs> but you can't see him hydrating on this stream. Yeah. Tony says mains are low tier demons. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not familiar with them. From uh, my years of playing D and D and and what have you, but that might be just I've not spent enough time looking at the monster manual. I don't know. We've never we've never come up against them, but they do look quite funky. The uh, the models are always the WizKids stuff is always fairly faithful representations of the stuff in the monster manuals and Tony also says that he'll be starting on the tank once fancy hat is done and he's looking forward to doing the glow on the Tesla cannon uh, I, I've never been able to get the hang of doing the well I guess I've never I've never really had a proper try at doing like glow on weapons for uh, such as that kind of thing some of the guys were talking about how they do it for their 40k miniatures the other day on the plasma weapons and what have you and uh, I figure eventually I will possibly have to give it a try but normally I just paint them as metal ribbing but I guess nah, now I've got a bit brave and I've been doing uh, a bit of lighting effect from lanterns and stuff the sky's the limit we could uh, we could do anything now Right, what colour shall I paint the inside of this shield? Really wants to be like black, doesn't it? I guess. Still working on them Necrons, Pete. Are they, uh... Have you repainted them all pink yet? It's all right, you can have them whatever colour you like. What, uh, what is it you need to do to get them finished off? Pete the Wargamer does an excellent tutorial on plasma glow effects, definitely worth checking out, says Tony. And uh, hi. Hevra says, uh, hello, real iron hand here. Hi. How are you doing? Thanks for dropping by. Uh, yes, yes, I do, yeah. Now we've said that. Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, just a second or two. I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna paint the mouth area on this shield, and then I will do it. Well, I've got me black out. <laughs> mm, yeah. Ooh, I'm looking at oh, you. Oh, sorry. So. Nathan is just going to paint what is finishing up and then he's going to show off some of the other, are they all orcs that you've stuck together? Yeah, we've got one stormcast stuck together. 
and show off some of the other miniatures that he's actually managed to get stuck together. I'm still struggling with this ridiculously detailed pot crop that I can't get the brush into <laughs> because I'm not that good. But you know, struggling along. And also, as some of you may know, I don't like painting brown and um, because they've got to fit in with Nathan's army and because he's got this massive wooden thing on his back carrying everything around and because Nathan wants him to wear brown clothes, it looks like I'm wearing, uh, it looks like I'm painting lots of brown again despite the fact I don't like brown because it's rubbish. Brown's not rubbish. <laughs> there we go right so i just need to find a different brown to do his shield and a bit of the wrappings inside there but we'll uh, we'll give him a minute to dry and then we'll show some of these other models so wicked d says russet brown rocks i don't like russet brown wicked d russet brown's awesome i've turned your microphone off so no one can hear you Thank you, it's very kind of you. Oh, what you subscribes? Oh, look at that, we all get all excited. <laughs> oh, awesome, thank you. Look, you get a little a little man doing a little dance now. That's, really... <laughs> That's very kind of you. If you um, put exclamation mark orc in, like you just have done, you'll get two entries now. Yeah, because you can subscribe um, to our channel for free using Amazon Prime. We like things that are free. I always encourage subscribing for free. Yep. Because why not? If you can. Right then. So, I've got another orc here, which is uh, one that I've uh, not painted yet, but he's in the painting hand already for action, in case I need to wait for the other chap to dry. So, uh, these are the Cruel Boys boys, whatever they're called, the Stabber guys. Stabber guys? Yeah, well, let, hang on, let me just check in my uh, book here and make sure I can tell you the correct terminology. I think you should call them Stabber guys, because that, that yeah. should be renamed. Yeah, Gut Rippers, or Stabber guys, as I like to call them. Uh, that's these guys. So, these are the regular Orc boys of the uh, Cruel Boys force. So we've got 10 of those, and they are led by this chap here, if I can find him. So I won't, I won't show you every single one, but you can build build this guy here. You can build him with this like he better helmet, headdress kind of thing going on, or you can build him just as a regular boy. Thanks, Pete. I'll uh, hydrate. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought, Hevra. Stabber guys. Stabber so, guys. so this stabber guy boss is the <laughs> uh, the the union unit leader guy. Oh, you've got to do it in a silly voice now. Wicked Wicked D says you've got to do it in a silly voice. Okay. Why don't you uh, Why don't you do it in stabber guy voice? No, I don't. I don't know if I could do that. These are the man skewer bolt boys. Yeah, that's right. Man skewer bolt boys. And these have got massive big crossbow things like this. Look. Yeah. Big crossbows. So they soften up the boat, the umis, ready for the other cool boys, killer, stabby guys to get in there, stuck in, and stab up the enemy. So these guys are really cool. Uh, should probably try and carry it on for a bit longer. <laughs> so these guys are really cool. And they've got massive crossbows and these huge quivers full of stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I really like them. I can't really figure out why orcs have got technology enough to have crossbows, but, yeah, they're cool. They look cool. That, that, that voice suits you. That's, that could be your normal voice. That could be my normal voice. Yeah, I think I might get a sore throat talking like that all the time. So, we're missing a figure off my board box here. We're missing the stab grot guy. This guy? Oh, you've got him there. That guy. Okay. 
<laughs> they don't like it open. Should be the stabber guy's uh, motto. So it's kind of, I, I completely agree. So we've got this. We've got this little guy here. He's called a stab rot, and he he turns. He follows around this guy, who's who's. What's he called? <laughs> Can't find it. This guy's the killer boss. So he goes around chopping up the got the umis with his uh, with his massive axe and you can build him with a shield or with a ball on a chain kind of cool weapon and then this little stabber grot follows him around chopping up the guys in the bed in the on the ground yeah super cool <laughs> yeah, yeah fine right and then what else have we got we've got uh, this yeah i'm just going to talk in my normal voice now that's right, shanking him in the ankles. So we've got this guy. This guy is the Swamp Caller Shaman. So he's uh, he's a rather cool-looking orc shaman who's... I don't know how to describe him, really. He's uh, he's just cool. It's like, proper awesome. What, what I would have liked is if GW had modelled this guy and this staff that he's got here would have been a massive chunk of bone... Like the old Orc Shaman model, I think that would have been a really nice nod to uh, the 90s Orc Shaman that I remember. But anyway, I think he's particularly funky. And I quite like the fact that he's wearing a massive giant skull as a bit of armour on his back. He's pretty funky. And he goes with the pot grot that uh, Mrs. MLG is painting. And then, and then we've got this guy who... Although I'm not really keen on the figure, but I, I love his name. So this guy is called a Merc Knob, right? So, and I reckon that's because he mercs the bad guys, or, or the good guys, whichever way you want to look at it. But he's called a Merc Knob with a Belcher Banner. So this thing's a Belcher Banner, and this is like the head or the tongue of a, a massive swamp beast, and he uh, somehow goes and like stinks out the uh, the 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 storm cast and all the other people that they're fighting and uh, he's particularly handy at chopping them up so i think that his face and the pose of the guy is absolutely fantastic but i think uh, i'm not so keen on the banner i think it would be funky if he maybe had like two hand weapons or something but plenty of conversion possibility in there because there's a couple of spare parts in the box so you could do something funky with him. And he's about roughly the same height as that killer boss guy. So if this guy wasn't stood on the dead storm cast on the floor, they'd be about the same kind of height. So you could make him into a pretty cool boss model. Yeah, I love I've, I've got one in a uh, in a box in the shop. It's uh, it's particularly funky that model uh, goblin squire. One of my friends painted it for us when for me when I was a uh, teenager, I think, or in my early twenties possibly, and he did an amazing job on it, like leopard print, leopard skin uh, patchwork on it, and all sorts of stuff. It was fantastic. So yeah, I've still got that model, although I've lost his shit sword, unfortunately. Uh, I'm afraid not, Pete the Priest. We've got a copy of the old Necron Codex, but not the new Codex. Uh, we have got them for sale, but we haven't got a shop copy. And uh, finally, this is possibly my favourite model out of the uh, orc half of the box. And uh, I'm going to leave him till last to paint this guy. But this is the... Let's get his uh, let's get his name right. He is the killer boss on Great Nash Tooth. Is that right? Yeah. Killer boss on Great Nash Tooth. So he's a massive orc. So as you might know, orcs get bigger... The more they fight and the more uh, the more they win, they get bigger and bigger. So this guy's bigger than all the rest of the orcs, and he's riding this huge like hyena monster thing. It's uh, it's awesome. So I'm gonna leave this guy till last because I think he's pretty spicy, and uh, I want to make sure I've got my color scheme well down before. <laughs> and what does he sound like? Oh, he sounds proper hard. He's like well hard and he crumps all the boys 
Yeah, smashes all their heads together until they do what he says. <laughs> and he laughs like this. <laughs> yeah, hyena paint job. I'm thinking, uh, yeah, some kind of like spot kind of pattern, maybe. Yeah, something. It doesn't look like it's got a huge amount of fur, but I can envisage uh, that it should have some kind of like spotty kind of. <laughs> <laughs> we did yeah that's a good point so yeah goblin squire says orc santa is that yeah so he did yeah i guess he did sound like orc santa didn't he but uh yeah we did do an orc santa riding a sleigh for about one of our window displays at christmas and uh, all the orcs was <laughs> All, all the orcs were uh, had jump packs and they were delivering presents to the houses and stuff. It was it was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, I like that one. We three D printed a, a sleigh and it was being pulled by uh, deaf copters, wasn't it? I think orc deaf copters. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Heather says, "I reckon he'd sound like Di Burnside from the Bill." You know, I I can remember watching the Bill when I was younger. But I can't really remember what Burnside sounded like. Although I have seen the same actor, and I can't remember the actor's name, but I have seen the same actor in some uh, particularly bad films uh, in the not-too-distant past. What's he... Oh, he's going to bug me now, what that guy's called. Anybody remember what he's called? That, uh, that actor guy from The Bill... So what do you think to the new way? Oh, and then I almost forgot. So this is, that's in Chris Ellison. Yeah, that's um, that's right, I think. So uh, almost forgot to show you what the other guys look like. So this is the only Stormcast figure that I've got to uh, got stuck together so far. And this is one of the Vindicators. So these are the Stormcast stabby spear guys. And uh, I really like them. I think these are possibly the best looking Stormcast figures that GW have currently made. So the old ones, like the first edition Stormcast, were a bit chonky and then they got a bit better the second time around. And now these guys are much better, although they still come on a massive 40mm base, which I think is just crazy. I don't know why he doesn't come on a 32mm. And then some of the bigger figures on... Uh, 40s but hey that's what they want to do but the pose and everything looks awesome i'm not going to paint them gold i'm going to paint these guys silver i think but uh yeah or, or maybe even go with a non-metallic color scheme but yeah i think he looks pretty cool and they get different head options for nearly every figure so this guy came with uh came with this head which has got like dreadlocks and a little bit of thing at the back and a bit of a beard going on but i've always like the head that head compared to the helmeted head i think it's bigger than the helmeted head so like they're gonna look a bit odd so i i think i'm gonna put all of the uh, all of these guys they're gonna have helmets on yeah i totally agree they've been on some kind of diet and they have been getting beach ready i mean like check out his uh, check out his washboard abs there He's uh, he's definitely ripped. <laughs> right, so gonna go with a different brown for the wood on his spear. Or I would do if my bottle wasn't blocked. Get me a paint pokey tool out. So when uh, when do we draw the raffle, my darling? When do we uh, press the thing? Eleven minutes and forty six seconds. Cool. Ba -ba -bum. Did you like that? That was my suspense music. Mm. Ooh, this this is a bit pale, isn't it? What's that? Ashen brown. Should have known, really, shouldn't I? All brown, the yeah, that's more like a flesh colour. Why aren't you been using your lovely brown that you were wicked deep like? 
uh, it's because I'd forgotten to pick it up but I've got it here on the table in front of me which is why I couldn't find it in the cupboard Russet Brown let's use some of that bad boy there we go Rubbish, Russet Brown. It's not rubbish. Yeah, look at it. It's not. It's like. What? It just looks like baby poo. Not like a, not a nice, rich, deep brown. Not a. Meh. Brown. That's like yellow. Yeah. It's just. Yellow brown. It's a great undercoat for wood and leather and anything else you might want to use it for. It's possible I probably could have uh, done a shake it up a touch more. Ebba says, will you do it in the bullseye style? Let's see what they could have won. <laughs> Let's win a speedboat in the middle of London. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Dave lives in a block of flats. He's won a caravan. Oh, you can go on holiday in a caravan. Well, I suppose. Nowhere to park. Speedboat, that's the thing that always got me. I mean, it, that's such a, I know. Such a niche, a niche prize, a speedboat. I mean, like, who wants that? Nobody wants that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like the 80s, isn't it? It's a... Yeah, but what are you going to do with that? Nothing. You're in a new kitchen. New yeah. kitchen or a speedboat. There was no in the middle, was there? But when, rubbish. when they did get a kitchen, you reckon it was just like you got the... Like when uh, DIY shops advertise kitchens and they always say like, oh, it's, it's only 900 quid for this brand new kitchen and all you actually get is eight units and a bit of work top. Do you think it was like that? That you've got a brand new kitchen, but if your kitchen was actually massive, oh, yeah, yeah. I, th I think, massive, you I think got... you've got a brand new kitchen that would fit in a flat, but if you lived in, in a house, it's not going to fit in. And yeah. then you'd have to pay for more kitchen yourself. Yeah. And you've won... And you've won this prize, which actually is now going to cost you money. Because you were never going to buy a new kitchen in the first place. But now you've won one that doesn't fit in your house. Yeah, you, you've won the opportunity <laughs> to spend more money. <laughs> yeah. How did they get the speedboat home? That's what I want to know. Wheeled it into the uh, into the studio. Look at this awesome prize that you've won. You've won a speedboat. Their heart sinks. They've done all that, all that awesome darts. And they've won a speedboat. And the other thinking is, came down on the train. How am I going to get this home? Yeah, they probably just wanted the microwave and the sandwich toaster, didn't they? Or well, the 200 quid in their bus fare around. Yeah. That's some awesome catchphrases, isn't it? Nothing in this bed, nothing in this case, 200 bed. That was one, wasn't it? That was a catchphrase. Two in a bit. Was it? Was that not that? I don't know. Yeah, that one, I like that one. Uh, it'll take me the commercial break to count it out. It's not a quid, Jim. What's it in two <laughs> 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 Golden Square says, the UK has an extensive canal system. The only problem would be speed limits on canals is four miles per hour. So we really test a speedboat. Yeah, we're just, we're just rowing, rowing our speedboat down the canal because mm. there's no point in putting the engine on. Yeah, two you see. Golden Square says, two in a bed is bullseye. I know, I knew, I knew. Yeah. Well, oh, it's not, that, it's yeah, not is like that, I said, what's a hot spot not? I mean, that's no, a completely really. different game. Yeah, <laughs> is, that, is that because two in a bed, like two in one yeah. uh, thing, didn't win you any extra prizes? I'm with you. I'm making out like I don't actually know, but we used to watch Bullseye every like Saturday tea time or whatever. Everyone did. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's right, Goblin Squire. Um, it was, uh, yeah, I knew, I knew until you said I don't know what the name of the show was, and now I can't remember. What was the top, middle, or bottom? What, um, strike it looking. Strike it looking, that's it. I did, I did know, but you know, tiny brain syndrome, it just falls out. I, I enjoyed when they did, um, what's his name, Alan Kerr, and they did, like, 
strike it lucky and the other things, didn't they? The quiz shows. I can't remember what it was. Play your cards right. Yeah, play your cards right and all those kind of things. They did a uh, like a bit of a reboot of them all, didn't they? With him. I thought he was quite good on it, actually. Blankety blank, you can only win a checkbook and pen. Who wants that? Checkbook and pen, it hasn't even got a written check in it. Here's, here's a blank check that nobody signed. Now, go on, on your bike. Yeah, I, I never understood that. So what's the point of having a blankety blank checkbook when... No need. No need for that. Sorry. Yeah, what's the point of having a blankety blank checkbook when you bank with NatWest or something? If it was like a checkbook sleeve that you'd put your maybe checkbook in. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe uh, maybe blankety blank checkbook sleeve and pen didn't have quite the same ring to it. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Goblin Square, no pleasing me. Goblin Square says, I'm sorry, there's no pleasing you, Mrs. MLG. Don't want a speedboat because it's too big. Don't want a checkbook, you're right, I don't. I want a new kitchen that fits in the kitchen. That's what we're having. <laughs> we don't need a new kitchen. Oh, we want to be famous, apparently. Yeah, let's be, let's be famous. Check that guy out. Don't check that guy out. Oh, come on, you silly thing. Uh, I got a phone call for you today. Did you? Yeah. yeah. You, got, you got a phone call for me. I, I wasn't there. No, no, How I did got, that work? I don't, well, I don't know. I got a phone call and they asked to speak to you. Aww. And it was uh, somebody who wanted to offer me insight into our business. Oh, did they not know that you work there? No. You, are, you, already, you already work there, so you already have all the insights that you need. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I sacked them off, obviously. Did you just hang up? I or, did, yeah. or did you string yeah, them along I... for a bit? That's, that's that's right, right Goblin Squire. Squire. They they do want to speak. They always want to speak to the real boss. Yeah, gotta get some big break. Um, I mean, trick, trick shots. Mm -hmm. Gotta get some big break. Trick shots. Oh, with John Berger. I don't know. Oh, was it? Was it? <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, everybody. Was it that they that they made the contestants do really really ridiculously? Shots, but then John did good ones. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I think John Virgo always did some like cool ones, didn't he? Mm. I used to watch that. Used to watch that. I used to like his waistcoats. You liked his waistcoats, didn't you? Yeah, they were cool. And what do we have nowadays then to look for? <laughs> I need to wash my paintbrush. You don't need to do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I need no need for that. No one else is doing that. What? That. No one, no one <laughs> else is doing that. No. Let's, let's have a vote in chat. Who else washes their paintbrush as noisily as Nathan yeah. does? Or in, what's that all about? Yeah. I used to really like Krypton Factor. Yeah, I used to watch Krypton Factor, yeah. Never do it, but yeah. I reckon, oh, I reckon I'd have been alright. Right. I reckon I'd have been alright on uh, Krypton Factor. Really? Mm. Why is that? Well, because it was like a bit of everything, wasn't it? You had to do the assault course thing at the end, and you had to uh, do all the puzzles and all that kind of stuff. All right, all right, I'll rephrase it. Who else on stream with some lovely people watching washes their paintbrush as noisily as Nathan? You're in your own house and no one else can hear you. I didn't really like Treasure Hunt with Challenge Annika. No, um, I, don't, I never really Annika. watched that. I watched it, but yeah, didn't really, I didn't like that one as much. My brother did, but I think he, that was because he, he had a bit of a crush on Annika Rice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Well, that was a conversation stopper. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use this is uh, Army Painter Rough Iron. I'm just going to use here, yeah, just on some uh, on this helmet. Just I want it to look a little bit different. Rough iron is from. Where do you want it? Oh, but I was looking for it earlier and I couldn't. I was looking for it earlier and I couldn't remember what colour I had used, but that's because you've stolen it over there. So we've only got 39 seconds left in the draw! Exclamation mark orc in the chat if you would like to enter. It's one entry for a follower and two automatically for a subscriber. Awesome. Gladiators. Oh yeah, yeah. I used to like gladiators. With that snake hips cobra. Who was Cobra? There was one called Cobra and there was one called Wolf. Oh yeah, I remember Wolf. I think is it I think that was a men. Oh the giveaway's closed! Giveaway's closed! Oh. Uh... I like Jet. Was Jet not one of the new ones? Was Jet one of them? Jet was one of the original female ones. Isn't, isn't she going to be at one of the Comic Cons? Is it Jet yeah. that's going to be at one of the Comic Cons? It is Jet, isn't it? I think so. But why at a Comic Con? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Jet from Gladiators is at a Comic Con, I don't get that. I guess they're struggling what, 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 what for uh, struggling for bookings post COVID. Well, Wicked B says Jet is a life coach now. Continues will go on my first. Which I can't do a Scottish accent. We'll have to get um, Hamish to do our history in a minute. Yeah. Phoenix, I don't remember Phoenix. That's mm. a comic. Too late, Tony. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't remember Phoenix. No. I don't remember most of them. So. There was yeah, Jet, Lightning. Who was that? I can't remember. Like, Cougar. I remember Cougar. He, he was one of the blokes. He was one of the blokes. Who was that bloke with the blonde hair? I don't know. Like young lad. No, I can't remember any of them. I don't know. Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, yeah you see. You did know you'd know. Oh, oh, I only know because Wicked D's just Oh, Wicked <laughs> I did look at the screen. There's me thinking he remembered. Cobra, I don't remember Cobra. Oh yeah, no, I do remember. You said Cougar. Remember Cobra, because that's what I said at the beginning. Oh, oh yeah, Saracen. I'm getting very confused now, I'm getting very confused. Yeah, we'll have to, have a, we'll have to look up the original lineup of the uh, Gladiator. Oh, or not. I mean, you know. Who was the other presenter? It was John Fashnow and someone else, wasn't it? Don't know. This is very uh, Warhammer topical, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you can't, you can't. Well, oh, that was away. it. Ul Ulrika Johnson, that was it. Ulrika Johnson and John Fashnow. It's <laughs> crazy pictures. Hunter and Ulrika got it on. Yeah, they did, I think, yeah. Yeah. It was cool. I used to love the travel aid. The, my my favourite bit of the whole thing was like the travel aid thing, where they, like, they had to run up the wrong way, didn't they? Oh, and when they had to climb back now. Yeah, and when they had to climb up the wall. And the, and, was it travel No, yeah, the travel aid was the, like, uh, like treadmill thing that was going the wrong way oh, right. and, and they had to run against it and the other one where they had to uh, climb up the wall and the gladiator was chasing them and they got so many second lead didn't they oh, I can't remember and then the gladiators had to catch them and travel. pull them off the wall see Winky D says it was the travel yeah with the dove from above Tony Ooh, ooh, oh, let's call the dove from above. What was it called? Shooting stars. Shooting stars, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I know that oh, one. Oh, yeah, and the, and the pugil sticks thing, that was good. You did that, you did the pugil yeah, sticks. Me, me, and, uh, me and little Miss MLG had a go at that, and she beats me every time. Could I have just a normal, like, gun metal colour or something out of the cupboard, my darling? I don't know what you mean by a normal. Yeah, uh, so I need a, a dark metal colour. That one? What's that? Yeah, that'll do. 
Thank you. Shall we see who's won? Yeah, yeah let's you know. see who's won. All this, all this talk of um, yeah, all this eight, talk of shooting stars. Eighties and nineties TV program. Right, let's see who's won then. Hi, Naz. Are you going to do a drum roll or something, are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit loud. Help! Help, you won! Yay! Yay! Woo! I'll get it out to you. Thank, Thank you. you. For, uh, Thanks a look. In case you yeah. hadn't seen it earlier. Congratulations. Awesome. Well done. Well done. I don't know. Just turns up, <laughs> subscribes, wins the prize. Boom. That's the way to do it. <laughs> awesome. We always we always like it when um, the people who actually know who we are win prizes rather than people who just come along. Just to win a prize. <laughs> yeah! Don't be mean, Governor Squire! That was nice! <laughs> yeah, with the drum roll, that's right. Tell me that you were washing your brush because you're that noisy. Yeah. I don't know. So you've got, I don't know, eight minutes or something, so you'll have to. Tell us all what you're doing and stuff. Okay. I'm still struggling immensely with this lovely guy over here. Can, did you press me with your phone? Yeah. So, so talking, talking about struggling, struggling, I'm struggling with uh, customs and import at the moment. So <laughs> there you go. Here's, here's an insight into the day-to-day -day workings of Mighty Lancer Games. So our Green Stuff World, I've been talking phrases about how our Green Stuff World order has been incoming from Spain for some time. Now, yesterday I was contacted by a company, this is like boring stuff, but like... Well, get on with just, it, it yeah. won't be as boring. So, uh, contacted yesterday by a company who, uh, a company that specialised in customs handling of overground, overland shipping. Right, so our Green Stuff World Order, because it is sizable, has been sent by lorry, which is why it's taken forever, it seems from Spain to the UK and uh, this company have contacted me and they have got our shipment at their depot in Essex or wherever it is and and they want me to like pay them a handling fee for shipping it on to us now normally it would come with UPS or whatever and the guy from UPS would just turn up and we'd give him a check and that was it but these guys now won't return my phone calls or emails, but they've got my stuff. So next time we order from Green Stuff World, me and you are going on holiday in the van to go and collect it, I think. Well, we won't be able to go on holiday because I haven't got a passport, so you'll have to go on your own. No, we'll, we'll get you a passport, it'll be fine. <laughs> you have to uh, read out what I say. <laughs> Heather says, if you'd followed that phone call, you'd have had the insights into your business and avoided all this. You've only yourself to blame. <laughs> and J-Star says, who are they? The Mafia. I'm starting to think so, J-Star. Like, yeah, they're ignoring my emails and they're ignoring my phone calls. And now they've, they've got my stuff and they won't give me it. And it's very frustrating. So uh, I've tried twice now. Two, or two consecutive days on multi-channels. So tomorrow we'll try again. But I've even tried ringing their head office today and they didn't answer the phone either. So I'm starting to think that maybe uh, somebody has stolen our Green Stuff World delivery. Which is obviously not ideal. Uh, but I'm not going to start getting upset about it until I've tried again. See you in a bit, Goblin Squire. Awesome. See you in a bit, Goblin Squire. We will, uh, we will be along shortly. Pete says it's all in my boots. It's all in your boots, Pete, which to be fair won't fit, but you know, yeah. just bring it round. Yeah, bring it round to the shop. We've got people waiting for some of this stuff, which what's, is the. What's the company called? Uh, EVCargo.com or something like that is. Cargo forwarding.
they've got a website that's uh, the pa front page on their website. I'm sure it's very official and all above board, but it definitely looks like a stock photo of a container that's been photoshopped so it says EV cargo on the side. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's most frustrating, Heather, because we've got stuff that people have been waiting for. Like uh, we've we've basically run out of green stuff, which is like one of the more boring products. Uh, so green stuff, acrylic resin, silicon stuff, um, rollers, and like the uh, the brick rollers and all sorts of other stuff, paintbrushes. There's, there's loads of items, including paints and different things uh, that we, we've got customers waiting for because we've, it's probably taken like two months or something. At least four by now. Oh, yeah, I reckon. So, yeah, I think I think the only... And, and it's cost a fortune to actually have it shipped as well. I had to pay a few hundred quid postage or shipping price for it as well, so... Uh, I think we'll just go and get it next time. Probably be easier. I'll uh, I'll have to discuss it with my contact at Green Stuff World. I didn't I didn't look for a shutter stock watermark, but that's a good point actually. Have you contacted Green Stuff World? I haven't not yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it one more try and then I'm gonna contact Green Stuff World and see if they can help. Are you gonna show off what you've been painting? Uh, yeah, I will. I will. So here we here's our orc so far. He's uh, still quite basic, but you going towards me? there. Yeah, stop. <laughs> <laughs> a delay on my screen. Oh, how many times are you oh, okay. Uh, so still quite basic, but he's got uh, Luftwaffe camo green skin. That's uh, Vallejo Luftwaffe camo green. Uh, we've got a wherever it is Reaper burning orange on his shield couple of coats of that just some plain uh, Reaper dragon black for his uh, like I don't know executioner's like hood bit uh, army paint a rough iron for this part gun metal for the end of the stabby spear thing some umber brown Dark umber for his like skirty bits and the uh, wrappings around his legs, and uh, yeah, that's where we're up to so far. So I need to get a couple of washes on, and then start picking out some detail. So this part is going to remain black. The shield's going to be a nice bright orange, and then the rest of the colours are going to be quite dark. So we can uh, so we can pick it out and also make him match nicely in with the rest of my. Oruk Iron Jaws, which uh, are all quite chonky, uh, chonky dark boys. So this this orange Hevra, which is like a really nice colour. So I don't know if you came after I was saying. So the, this is one of the HD paints that Reaper used to make, but they've discontinued this particular range. But they have rebranded these as the Bones range of paints so you can still get a color match for this so there's burning orange and then fireball orange is a really nice highlight color to it as well uh, so they're uh, like sort of consecutive paints in the range really nice and really good coverage from oranges which you don't normally get uh, am i going to do some swampy bases i was thinking about doing some swampy bases and uh, Green Stuff World do do some nice swamp stuff, but fortunately we've got a drawer full of their nice tufts already, so we don't need to uh, be hanging around waiting for any of the other stuff to turn up. So that's pretty cool. We've got some uh, some really awesome tufts, and we've got some really nice gamers grass swamp tufts that look a bit like briars and stuff, which are uh, particularly cool. Awesome. Oh, you're looking at me. Oh, I'm sorry. I am sorry, my darling. It's because I love you so much. I no, just like looking not. at you. Why are you looking at me? I was waiting for a cue, really, to see. Like, it's yeah. almost eight o'clock that it's we're not gonna. Really, it's not right. No, oh, okay. Since, since when did you? Uh... So I mean, while while we're waiting for uh, well, we go there, 
I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to use some old Citadel wash bowel red. So I've got a few of these old Citadel washes, which I quite like. I'm going to use some bowel red and I'm going to use this for uh, his shield. So we're going to go over. Are you ready to say goodbye to everybody? Yeah, I am, yeah. So uh, thanks everybody for checking in. Well done to Hera for winning the key ring and we'll get it shipped out to you as uh, soon as we can and see you all later bye. thanks for coming bye, bye.